Okay, so the sine and cosine law, um, today we're going to start, sine law tends to be the easier one to start with, so we'll talk about these. Um, one, one thing to remember when you're looking at the, the sine laws is, uh, well, in this one it looks like I've got capital letters, um, let's say capital letters, angles, and lowercase. Here, I'll just quickly change my picture around a bit. So let me show you. Uh, so it would be, uh, I can't remember if this is the same, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so this would be the, lab the labeling convention that the um, small letters represent sides and the big letters represent angles. And the way we pair them up is it's in a triangle, there's always one side that you can associate with an angle, it's the one opposite or directly across. So for example, this is labeled A because the angle directly across from it is A. There's two adjacent sides, so there'd be some, you know, who is adjacent? Well, there's, there's some confusion because there's two pieces. But there's only one that's opposite, so that's why we're going to use the opposite side to be labeled with the same letter for these two. Okay? So now I'm going to show you where cosine law comes from. So those of you who are future and aspiring mathematicians can sort of have an appreciation for where that, where that comes from. That doesn't look very perpendicular. Let me try that again. Well, it's better, but anyways. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to the trig that you do know how to do, which is right angle trigonometry. And so the reason I'm doing it this way is we can use the knowledge you've already got to figure out where sine and cosine law comes from. So the only reason this picture is helpful is if for some reason you forgot the uh, sine law and you didn't have a formula around, it could help you re, uh, remember it. So I'm going to call this here h because this is the height of the triangle. Okay. And I'm going to come up with a formula that relates pieces of this triangle. Okay. So for example, <laughs> if I was to write down, um, I'm going to call this triangle number one, which is the left half, and triangle number two. Okay. So in triangle number one, if I was to take the sine of B, it's equal to opposite over hypotenuse. In triangle number two, if I was to take the sine of A, it's equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So there's something these things have in common, and that's the letter <coughs> H. So I'm going to solve this to be H equals a sine capital B and H equals B sine capital A. So these two things they have in common. If H has two different values, I can make them equal. So if H is A sine B, A sine B must be the same thing as over here where it's B sine A. And it looks really messy, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide these things. So I'm going to move A to the other side and B to the other side, which will give me the sine of B over B equals sine of A over A. So that's one way that uh, you can derive the cosine law from what you already know of trig. Again, it's not something that you're going to practically need to do, but if you do forget it or you need to come up with it, then that's, that's where it comes from. Okay? So uh, we're going to practice using it, though, for the most of the day. So um, let's try finding some of the missing sides and angles, and we'll round to the nearest decimal when we do that. So for this one, um, let's take a look. We'll try to find uh, side A uh, and angles A and C. Okay, so one thing uh, you'll find, the reason we give two types of, uh, two forms for the sine law, it could either be like this or it could be like this, um, is usually when you solve, you want your unknown on the top so that you don't have to deal with the fractions. So if you were looking for a missing side, this would be a good formula to use for a missing side. And if you were looking for a missing angle, it would be a good one to use down here because the angles are on the top. 
Now that's not to say that you can't rearrange it once you use it, but it means an extra step when you do solve it. So uh, I'm going to try to use that shortcut for you. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for the sine law, which are things that are opposite to each other. So here's an angle, here's a side, here's an angle, and here's a side. So these four things are going to have the sine law ra uh, ratios. So if I go sine of C and put it on top, because that's what I'm looking for, divided by 29 equals sine of uh, 63 over 42. So I could rearrange this. The sine of C is 29 sine 63 all divided by 42. That gives me, let's see here, uh, sine of 63 divided by 42. That gives me about uh, sine of C is 0 0.62. Um, and then do you remember how you get the angle out of it in your calculator? Any thoughts? This, yeah. Do the uh, negative sign. Yeah. So this gives me a ratio. That sine law tells me the ratio. If I want to know the angle, then I have to use this one. So this one gives me an angle. Sine of zero point six two will equal angle C. So inverse sine of that. So it's about thirty eight degrees. Okay, so this here is about thirty eight. Um, I could then use the information I've got. If there's 38 degrees and 63 here, that's 101. So there must be 79 degrees for the missing angle that's there. And then finally, um, I can use sine law again. Maybe I'll use the opposite. Um, and let's just say I use these two. And I can write up another sine law equation. And so for us, it's going to be So sorry, because I'm looking for A, I'm going to put A on the top. So I'll say A divided by the sine of 79 equals uh, 42 divided by the sine of 63. So if I rearrange this, I get the length of... which is 46.27. So it's the one decimal place, 46.3 would be enough. Okay. Any questions so far on the sign law? Okay, so I'll let you uh, finish this one here and then we'll double check it.